stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. It's Paul and Will, and we've got our debonair ideal segment for this evening. We're going to talk about the top five elements to creating a great cigar man cave. I'm very excited about this segment, Will. Yeah, do we want to make our announcement now or hold yeah, off on No, that? let's do it. I think we should make our announcement because uh, in the previous segment, we ran a contest and we already had uh, a winner and we had another winner that was so close and we're going to award both of uh, both people who've responded already that had the correct answer. Um, they were only off by probably less than a minute. So... Um, we had some extra, uh, I checked in the break, I checked and made sure we, what we had to send them. So, um, Peter, you are the first winner. So Peter, you win the, uh, four pack. So you get two Toros and two Torpedoes in the Quattro Senka Reserva Especial. You get the, uh, limited edition Hoya de Nicaragua cutter and a Hoya de Nicaragua hat which are awesome prizes. We were just admiring the the cutter uh, in the break. It's a very nice cutter. Awesome. Congratulations to you, Peter. Congrats, yep. Paradox, you are the runner-up. Now, normally our runners-up, you know what a runners-up usually get, Will? They get zip. Zero, nothing. But (laughs) we're making an exception in this case. Paradox, you are also a winner. Normally, second place is the first loser. In this case, you are the second winner. So, Paradox, you get a uh, one each, one Hoya de Nicaragua um, Quattro Cinco Reserva Especial Toro and Torpedo. So, you get two cigars and you get a Hoya de Nicaragua hat with that. That was like all the stuff that they sent us. I wanted to give whatever we had left um, to our listeners. We took some to review and essentially all the rest have gone uh, to our listeners. So. Yep, yep. Uh, I knew our I knew our listeners would get it. I mean, we just yeah. have we just well, have awesome you know, I, they're great cigars and they're great prizes too. I in I mean, you know, we get a lot of hats and t-shirts and things like that and and they're all, they're all nice, but the Hoya hats, dude, are awesome. They're, re- they're like fitted hats. They're all black. They look awesome. They look awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've seen their swag, and they, 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 you know, that's. I think, I think that's one thing they've always had in common with Drew Estate too. So, um, yeah, you know, they've always done even beforehand. They had good swag. So yeah. before they were getting distributed by them, and, and their cigars are really good. I, I'm really digging this blend. Yeah, I, I this Quattro Cinco. Um, I think folks are really gonna like it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is a good cigar. So um, not all of us have a cigar smoker-friendly man cave at home. It, it, it kind of is – it can be a very elusive thing. I didn't always have a place um, that I could smoke cigars. And I understand even a lot of us that are hardcore cigar smokers, you don't want to smoke in your house. And even if the wife lets you, I mean, you yourself, may, you may not want to smoke in your house, right? Um if you are to do it in your house, ventilation is extremely important. Um, hence, my first recommendation will, a lot of times you're going to want your cigar smoker friendly man cave to be separate from your house. A lot of that saves your cost. Uh, it saves the smoke from getting in your house, the smell from getting in your house. If you've got children, of course, you don't want them breathing the smoke either. Um, so I like to have it separate from the house. The garage is a good option because that's separate enough from the house where you can control it because it's usually a big enough space where the smoke doesn't travel in. Though I have a very small garage, so when I would smoke in the garage, the smoke would kind of travel in, and the wife wasn't too happy about that. So happy wife, happy life. In my case, um, we built uh, what we deemed as a workshop that was a separate structure underneath the deck that is completely separate from the house. 
Um, and I highly recommend it if, as much as you can separate it from the house. Um, has this other benefit of not only the smell and smoke leaking into your house, but when you go smoke a cigar, you're actually not in your house, and it's kind of an escape from the craziness that can be your house, <laughs> right? So, Will, I don't know if you've had similar experiences. I think that's a key. I think that's a key element. Is you go look. A cigarette's a different story um, yep. than a cigar, and I think there's something about a cigar. We, you know, that's why people will go to the cigar lounge. They want to kind of get away. Um, it's like a mini vacation, like a, a, a you know, an, an hourly vacation, if you may. Well, you know, obviously you're not always going to go to the cigar shop, you know. So there's you want to have that next best thing at home. Um, I have the I have a garage. I have an HVAC in the garage, yep. uh, which makes it very very comfortable uh, in there. Um, and like I said, it's just, I have a total preference to be in here. It's kind of like my escape. Yeah. Um, and no, I don't have to, I have, I, you know, I have nice furniture and stuff. I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about it there. Um, it's, yeah. And it's not so much the smell too. It's, you don't want to burn your stuff either. Cause it's inevitable. If you smoke a lot of cigars in there, you're going to drop ash. You're going to, something's going to fall, whatever things can get burned too. And you don't want that to happen to your nice furniture. Yeah, you know, and for folks who the workshop that Paul's talking about, if you go back um, into the Stogie Geeks archives, and I think it's before episode eighty-one, yep, when we when you back. moved into, uh, it's the old Studio B, yeah, and you can kind of get a view of of, of Paul's workshop, um, uh, dude. It's a workshop. I mean, it's, it's a workshop. It's, I mean, and I it know works we'll great about, now when I when I want to just go have a cigar at home, I can go into a separate space. It's my own space. There's a lot I'd like to do to make it nicer in there, but it's a space where I can smoke cigars. I'm not bothering anyone. No one can hear the TV. No one can, you know what I mean? It's a completely separate space. Yeah, and, and I know we'll important. talk more we'll talk more about it with the four year anniversary show of the of the history. I think that that's when I got to see it, I was amazed how you ran a show from there. Which it's it, it's, yeah, because it's tiny, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to talk about how it plays in the history of the show, that small workshop, you know, say what you will about it, it enabled us to start the show. Before that, I had no place to do the show. Where else would I be able to smoke and record an episode all at the same time? Um, without spending, you know, I, we didn't have the budget back then to put a fancy ventilation system to allow smoking in the house. So we had to have the separate structure, and that's really what enabled us to do the show. So yep, it was yep. very integral to the beginnings of the Stogie Geeks. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, but there was a charm to it, too. It's kind of, you know, as we were going back, looking at some of the um, archives, you know, for the big four-year show, there was, there's a charm to it, I'll say. I mean, I love, I love the setup we have now, don't get me wrong, but there was yeah. a little charm to it, yeah. You know, when you're in a small space, you're somewhat limited to shower curtains to hide the background. <laughs> right. But, but, you know, back to the point of, of, a, of, a, of a man cave, I think there needs to be – I think a charm is, is a key thing. Look, it's not going to be a showpiece. It's mm -hmm. not going to be, you know – you just you kind of want to get in there, and like you said, if you're gonna get ashes on the floor, you'll get ashes on the floor. You know exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta yeah. have a space like that. That's important. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, you know, I think leather and the kind of flooring should be conducive to to smart to cigar smoking. So the uh, materials of the furniture, the flooring, and things like that have to be conducive to cigar smoking. Like Gosh. having a, you know, having a cloth couch or cloth chair. It's it's just it's gonna absorb that smell. It's gonna be prone to burn marks happening and things like that. You know, I was just I, I spent a week in a hotel where I was able to smoke this week, and mm -hmm. I'm hoping with with all the ashes and a couple of burns, I'm, I'm hoping they stole us smoking there. I tried to be careful, I, but those it's, cloth it's, couches yeah. are tough. I mean, let me tell you, when the ashes get in there, they get in there. It's unavoidable, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you got to really do some good vacuuming to get it out of cloth and carpet. So. <laughs> Probably want to yeah. avoid those materials in your, uh, in your in your man cave. Yeah, um, I mean, I remember. Yeah, go ahead, Will. I, I remember my grandfather with his chair. He'd have those cigarette burns in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> ventilation is key as well. Absolutely. We've talked about ventilation in the past. Um, for me, there's really two elements to ventilation. Um, the first being fresh air in and smoky air out. That means you have to have a source where something is putting fresh, clean air into the environment 
and you also have to have a source that's taking the smoky air out. Um, so you can't really just have a, uh, a source that's sucking the air out or a, a source that's just blowing fresh air in, which means if you go into your man cave and you're like, well, my ventilation system is I'm just going to open a window, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. No. Um, the very simple cost-effective way to do it is to uh, have one of those window box fans you know, the ones that have two fans uh, in one, so there's two fan blades going. And most of those uh, will have a, a function on the called circulate. So one of the fans in the window will blow in and the other one will suck out. That's a yep. great way. If you only have one window, that's a great way to do it. Those box fans are pretty cheap. You can get them for $20, 30 $40, um, uh, you know, on Amazon. Uh, or if it's a seasonal thing, you can go into your local Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever store and buy one of those fans. Uh, it, it, it's a great thing. Uh, so that's kind of like your port. Now, when you do that, though, your fresh air source is outside air, right? The air coming in is going to be whatever temperature it is outside. <laughs> And what that's going to do is it's going to make your man cave whatever temperature it is outside. So if it's yeah. minus 20 outside, that means it's going to be minus 20 in your man cave. If it's 90 degrees with 100% humidity, that's going to what it's going to be in your man cave. So unless you live in San Diego, you're going to need some type of heating or cooling source inside of your man cave to maintain some kind of temperature. Yeah. And, you know, you can do it. Without breaking the budget either, um, you yeah, know. One of those, it, I have one of those stand-up units that mm -hmm. connect to the the window. Um, and the stand-up units, now, I mean, you can get them now. They're all over the place now. Um, they're very, very common and not that expensive, right? It can do heating and it can do air conditioning all in one stand-up unit. Yep, and I have one actually in one of the in one of the rooms in my house because I just in the in the summer I like it like icy cold, mm -hmm. and the air conditioner just in this one room Don't wasn't care. cutting it, so I just put that supplemental it just kind of pops right in the window yep um and i paid like 300 bucks for it and i've had the thing eight years and i've gotten my money's worth but they also have the the uh the air conditioners that you could run the duct as well the supplemental units yep. so if you don't have a window you know you can drill a hole and, and yes. pretty much get the duct that way that's as well. what i have yeah it's a standalone unit and then it's got a hose and then you can vent it out wherever and a lot of those yep. some of those you can buy the one i have will does heating and air conditioning all yep. at once. mine has heating and air conditioning too it's yeah a, yep and it has a fan in it, uh, so it can do fan or heat or air conditioning. Yeah. Um, so if it is nice outside and you are going to you know, open up a window, you can kick the fan on and it'll actually suck some of the smoke out as well. Right. Yeah, so it's some cost-effective means to do it. Now, the other way is to do the fancy, you can talk to your HVAC contractor. Um, for a small space, what I was told recently, it's about $3,500 for the smoke ventilation system, which does the constant, you know, every three to five minutes replaces all of the air inside of it. Uh, and that's about $3,500 to do a very small space. So that's expensive. It's expensive, but it is an option if you're going to, if you're going to do that inside a room in the house, that's the way to go. Yeah. And we, we probably, at some point I'd love to do a segment on that. Um, what I can tell people about that is if you're going to invest in that, really do your homework. Yes. And because um, filters are a, big big part of that that system and the yeah. filters can run different prices and some need to be changed more than others that's why i'd love at some point we, we do is maybe we yeah, do some I research mean, to do a segment on it yeah. yeah so we talked about ventilation and temperature control but you can also supplement that with some type of uh, hepa filter system that you can buy in any store or online or whatever um, I've got one of those in my office too. So that doesn't do any ventilation. It doesn't do any temperature control, but it just filters the air uh, that's in there as well. And that was kind of my second element that you might want in your man cave is to have one of those. You can get smaller ones that aren't expensive. You can get a full ventilation temperature control that has the filtering inside of it. So, I mean, there's a huge broad spectrum. Um, so you can put a box fan in the window and then you can buy a HEPA filter you know, for 50 bucks uh, and stick it in there as well. And I've seen, you know, cigar lounges and man caves do, a, 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 you know, everything from the box fan to the $50 HEPA filter thing to, you know, the full system. So, yeah. The, the other thing, just what I see a lot of people do is this, um, particularly down here, the screened in porches are very popular. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, the only thing I'll say is that, and they, in the winter, you can heat them, but in the summer, they become hot. 
that, that's the one. But yeah, but they are a nice option too. And you could throw a ceiling fan in there too. They're great. This is the time of the year. Absolutely. They're perfect down here. Yeah. Um, so TV and Wi-Fi, very important. Oh, yeah. You want your man cave to have some entertainment. So you definitely want to have a TV in there. Uh, you want to have make sure your Wi-Fi goes out there because, you know, you might want to sit there on your iPad for a while. You may want to I, – I watch TV in my man cave a lot. Um, you know, after the family goes to bed, uh, I'll may go into my man cave and, and watch some TV and have a cigar. And, I, and that's a great usage of a man cave. So make sure you have the proper wiring and power and all that stuff to support a TV in there. Yeah, and what's great now, um, if you're like a direct TV customer – you get direct TV on your computer. Mm-hmm. So, hey, if you don't want to get a TV, maybe you just get a, you know, you, you throw a monitor or a larger monitor out there or something. Um, you don't have to worry about getting a cable connection or anything like that. Yeah, and Roku, can, Roku is great. Roku, yeah, absolutely. I have a Roku in my man cave, um, you know, Wi Fi, and I can do Amazon, Netflix, and all that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, the technology is getting a lot better right now where it's making it a, a lot easier We where you can do stuff. I mean, and I've always, I've always had uh, the the, uh, the DVD and the Blu-ray as well handy. Yep. Yep. Um, I would say the most important thing to your man cave is probably number five on my list, and that is to have good friends to share a cigar with because there's nothing worse, as Jose Blanco says, than smoking a cigar with an asshole. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing so better. Right. <laughs> And there's nothing better than having a cigar uh, with someone uh, over a steak and a big Idaho potato. Yeah, <laughs> that too. That too. Sorry, but... You know, Mark, well, Jr., Mark Jr. Gonna... and I, uh, Mark Jr. and I, before our, you know our families grew and we had a lot more family responsibilities, um, we watched om- for a, an entire football season. We watched almost every Sunday night game together in my man cave. That was a very memorable uh, experience. Uh, that I have, and, you know, he would just come over every Sunday night uh, after the, you know, kids went to bed, and we would just sit there and smoke cigars and, and watch Sunday night football, so. The the most memorable moment in my man cave, though, had to be when my future son-in-law showed up with the Opus X's, yes. and I took, I took him into the man cave. I knew why he was coming over, and I turned the heat up to an incredibly hot level. <laughs> To basically make him sweat. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So that that's my most memorable thing. And then I lit up the Opus X right after one of them right after that. So there you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Uh, so those are my top five elements to having a, a great cigar man cave. I think that's great. Yeah. And uh, smoke some debonair cigars in, uh, especially that A cigar. That's the one you want to oh. have in your man cave, dude. You that was an Oasis rating from you, wasn't it? Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, and I smoked it in my in my garage, and it's a it's an it you're gonna want about three hours, and you're gonna want to just smoke that thing. Um, you're not gonna want to distract yourself with it, it yeah. because it it's a big cigar. Give it the time it deserves with something like that. Absolutely. Um, it's a Saturday afternoon slow day. You know, if it's raining outside, no yard work, no good games on. Um, smoke that thing. You, will, I mean, it it is a special cigar. I asked Stogie Santa. I said. And he was like, yep, yep, he goes, it's that good. Awesome. Well, with that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about our stogies for the week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 